Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another episode of the strategy series. In today's video, we're going over part two for how to counter Vegex. I actually did part one about two months ago, right when the set and this, and this deck was about to come out, but that was geared more towards dealing with Vegex as it related to the Universe 3 cards, which now, as we know, are banned. With the Universe 3 ban, I didn't really think anyone was going to be able to predict this level of dominance from Vegex. I mean, the last two top eights that I covered uh, were both, they included three Vegex out of the entire top eight. The event two weeks ago at the NJ1K was a top four split, and it was three Vedics in top four. So I'm pretty sure Vedex would have went to win that event as well. And then last weekend, we saw Jordan Markle win with Vegex. And again, I don't think anyone realized how dominant this deck would be without Universe 3, but I think it's time to go over this with the strategy series, go over how to counter Vegex as it has become what it is, a very dominant force in the format. So guys, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss a video. If you want to help support the channel, there are many ways down in the description to do so. Make sure to check out the Gemmy app and the Patreon if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with yours truly, as well as your crosswalk competitive articles. Make sure to check out Dex Protection for your sleeves, deck boxes, binders, all that card storage stuff. And finally, if you want to buy or pre-order any of the cards you see in today's video, be sure to use my link in the description to TCG Player. That being said, let's get started. So let's talk about what Vegex has become first. So like I mentioned before, the video I did about two months ago, Countering Vegex Part 1, that was more geared toward the Universe 3 stuff. Once Vegex lost the Universe 3 stuff, many players, including myself, thought that Vegex would transition to more of a mid-range deck. It just didn't seem like Vegex had that aggressive capability like it had with the Universe 3 stuff. But after the mid-range stuff didn't quite work because Vegex doesn't really have super impactful negates or super impactful counterplays, at least when you compare to things like Topo Righteous Aid or Kakunsa Beastly Maiden, Flying Nimbus, things like that. They have Protector of the People, but it is a little bit of a costly card and only very good in certain scenarios. They have Power Burst, but that's not really great for a super long game, especially when you're not playing like Skillless, for example. And for some reason, Black doesn't have a free counterplay to go along with its unison, right? So that being said, Vegex had to find its spot back as an aggro deck somehow, and how did that happen? Well, people really started to abuse Bivity, which was always an abused card in the deck, but I guess maybe the Universe 3 stuff back then kind of overshadowed just how powerful Bivity was. I mean, nowadays, what people do to make up for that lack of aggression that they lost with the Universe 3 cards, they play three to four copies of a double striker like Hidden Power East Supreme Kai or Further Instruction Champa, and they start attacking with their Supreme Kai's Guardian of Space Time, right? They're just making everything into a lethal attacker with Bivity. Primeval Conjurer, a card that is uh, very contentious in the community. This is not going to be a video talking about whether or not this card should be banned. I'll probably do that in a, in a different video. But anyways, besides that stuff, I mean, using Bivity to turn any attacker into a lethal threat, whether it's the Trunks Blocker, whether it's Time Agent Vegeta, whether it's the Supreme Kai, the Leader, or the Unison, they're also leaning more heavily into the Vegex Burning Impact Unleashed, which is brought out by either the uh, Vegex Space Time Synthesis or Vegex Father Son Bonds, the Champ Pack 2020 promo. So that being said, that's more or less what the deck is trying to do, and they're trying to recycle Bibbity as much as physically possible. Vegex Space Time Unleashed is going to allow you to grab Bibbity back from the warp if it happens to be there, and you will overwhelm turns one and possibly turn two. So getting Bibbity in the warp is not impossible. And besides that, the Fu mission accomplished to drop from Draft Box One can also recycle Bibbity. So that being said, pretty much what the deck wants to do, and, and actually, even though it's an aggro deck, it doesn't necessarily want to kill you turns one, two, or three. It can, given the right circumstances. But this deck can play the long game and just put pressure on continuously. So I just wanted to make that a mention there. So one thing I want to mention here that I didn't mention in part one of Countering Vegex that I think is actually really important to start with are cards to deal with Bibbity. Now, they're not super um, bountiful. There's not a ton of cards there that deal with, with Bibbity, but there is a card that is ultra generic that does help a lot. That's going to be West Kai Keeping Watch or Ultimate Judgment Jocko. Uh, I still wonder why Brian Samuel played that in his... Uh, in his all-star showdown kid cool list instead of playing west kai keeping watch but regardless uh they both essentially do the same thing basically when you combo this card choose one card in your opponent's combo area and return it to the owner's hand so what's really interesting was brian main decked ultimate judgment jocko in that skill list that i mentioned uh and that was definitely a meta call for vegex i mean just getting the bibbity out of the combo area basically nullifies all that combo power and any deck can play west kai keeping watch or ultimate judgment jocko even though they are blue cards you never have to charge them you never have to pay energy for them you never have to play them so purely using them as combo to deal with bibbity is pretty good and the fact is it just seems like vegex is becoming a lot more popular both at the local and competitive level 
so having two or three copies of this or jocko in your main deck definitely seems like a good call now one problem i will kind of point out with it is oftentimes when vegex combos one bivity is enough to force you to do something drastic and what i mean by do something drastic is probably use west kai keeping watch so a good vedex player can make it painful for you they can attack with like a 15k threat they'll maybe drop like a double strike like a kai or a champa and then maybe drop like a, a bivity right and that'll probably force you to use kai to get out of that attack and then unfortunately they'll probably be able to swing another another attacker and then drop the bivity there but if you do catch them on an all-in this kai probably will win you the game especially in game one they probably won't expect this card in game one otherwise though let's say that same situation i just mentioned if they use the kai and they need to get, attack with another threat well now hopefully they either don't have the energy or the kai in their hand to now give something else double strike so that could be another way that uh you kind of luck out in that situation otherwise though it is just an overall great card for dealing with bibbity negotiator krillin is a much better card for dealing with bibbity but it's much more specific you you can only play this in green decks and i'll explain why so it's a one drop 5k barrier auto when you combo this card from the battle area choose up to one card in your opponent's combo area and place it in the owner's drop area so you have to combo it from the drop area meaning that you have to play it meaning you have to pay a green energy right so you have to be playing some sort of green deck that can play this thing out what's really cool though is it puts bibbity in the drop not back to their hands so they have to go through resources either paying energy or i mean really they, they have to pay energy and use a card either from their warp or play the vegex fusion in order to get bibbity back to their hand and that's not nearly as easy as you know you just putting it back in their hand for them with west kai right now we're not seeing green get a ton of play at these competitive tournaments or you know anywhere really i mean green just has really really fallen off since the beginning of the format but it does seem like green has one of if not the best matchup against vegex and negotiator krillin is certainly one of those cards so what's really cool about negotiator krillin is having barrier it means that you know vegex really can't deal with it nothing in the current vegex list can deal with barrier and there aren't a ton of cheap mono black cards that will help vegex deal with barrier either so with that being said it's a great card it does cost an energy but the cool thing is you can pay the energy at any point in the game because it's not like it's a one drop 5k combo right it's a one drop battle card meaning you could play this thing on turn one it'll sit there all game and then you use it when your opponent tries to go for a vividity play right so in my opinion really good uh obviously mono green decks will play negotiator krillin any multicolor green deck will play negotiator krillin but what's really cool as well is that aod that which is a very very green deck can also play negotiator krillin so moving along talking about some of the negates and turn stoppers so dormant potential unleashed we talked about it in part one it is one of the best ways to deal with vegex i mean again it is a green only card another reason why green has a great matchup against vegex and unlike nimbus dormant potential unleashed limits the opponent to two attacks you use this you pitch a green card your opponent can finish the attack they're swinging with because dormant doesn't actually stop the attack they're going with uh, and then they have one more attack period that's it so with that being the case dormant is another great card against vegex although you do have to be careful to an extent because constantly using recycling dormant potential unleash like mono green can do can actually possibly lead you to depleting on your card advantage which could definitely be a bad thing so you definitely want to be using that wisely making sure you're not pitching too many cards because in reality if you don't have enough cards to you know somehow mount a comeback and win the game you're not going to be doing a whole lot of productive stuff flying nimbus is a slightly worse version of dorm potential unleashed it stops your opponent from attacking with too many battle cards but they still do get their leader swing and as many unison swings as they can get off in a turn so but i mean it's, it's just better to have it than not to have it in yellow just because you know if they have a super wide board of time age of vegetas of reluctant reinforcements of other battle cards that can drop a bivity on you know spending two cards to stop that board is better than stop than spending five cards to stop that board right sense of being is going to be one of the better uses in mono blue and even blue splash decks you know multicolored blue decks because it does stop a good amount of the attacks from the vedex player it stops the leader swing whether they're awakened or unawakened it stops time age of vegeta it stops the splintering mind mass sand although they can still burn you but it does stop the actual regular damage of the mass sand so all their attackers are 15k or less this card is pretty good at stopping so if you're noticing that their strategy for the turn or for the game is go wide on you sensu bean is going to be one of the better cards you can use to stop more of their attacks than not right moving along i want to talk about some wide board removal like i mentioned before that the vedex deck can go relatively wide seeker at any mass sand is a card that most decks can play and when you overwhelm this out you can get great value on it you can warp their time agent trunks you can warp then up to three of their supreme kai uh guardians of space time 
So with that being the case, I mean, this is a card you can get great, great value from it against Vegex. And with the amount of cards they're going to make you spend to defend, you're probably going to be able to use it relatively easily. Another card I want to mention, but I want you to be careful with is SS Vegeta Exploding Weakness. The reason I say be careful with it is because counterplay battle cards are very good against Vegex but they are somewhat of a weakness and that's because of koitsukai mechanical courage koitsukai says warp it from the drop area well technically remove it from the game then you can either bottom deck one or two cards from your hand and then draw that many cards and then for the rest of the turn if your opponent plays a battle card on their on your turn with 20k or less power they have to warp two cards from their hand so while vegeta can be great for sweeping their board if they have koitsukai vegeta can be more of a detriment than a useful card and that same thing kind of applies to the next two cards kakunta beastly maiden and topo righteous aid obviously topo is going to be one of the best cards in red for basically stopping your opponent's aggressive turn but if they do go into kakunta i'm sorry if they do go into koitsukai topo can uh, can definitely be more of a liability there although in certain scenarios honestly it can be the right play to just play topo pitch for topo and then warp two for uh for koitsukai because if you don't do that what are you going to do pitch five six cards to live and, and possibly not be able to out combo a Bibbity. uh that to playing the topo into the koitsukai might be a better option kakunta i have here more so for dealing with the vegex burning impact and the vegex six drops you really want to have some hard removal if your deck can manage to to mount it for those cards because if that seven drop vegex sticks around and swings turn after turn after turn it's going to be very very difficult for you to maintain card advantage and for you to win at that point and that's one of the reasons why you know it, it is tougher to remove a seven drop from the game but green can do it pretty well another reason why green has a pretty good matchup against vegex a lesser used card but a card you're probably siding for other matchups anyway and you might even be main decking is dark power black mass sand it does stop them from playing their um supreme kai of times guardian space times and their time agent trunks is it's not the greatest hindrance in the world to them but if you are main decking it anyway or you are side decking it anyway and you don't really want them to get a ton of free value on you that's a great way to do it is by using dark power black mass sand and most vedic lists are not playing crisis crusher anymore so keep that in mind next up some very very niche cards maybe a little bit less useful now that u3 is banned but still pretty useful toa twisted sister and burning impact on uh these cards are great for removing cards from your opponent's drop area vegex is a very drop area dependent deck and like we talked about before they have the foo mission accomplished they have the new four drop gray boo from set 10 they have sometimes sand instincts so those cards in the drop area if that is what you find to be your problem them getting value out of their drop area these cards are going to be quite good for helping you deal with that so guys that's going to wrap up today's video for how to beat vegex hope this stuff helped you out definitely leave any questions you have down in the comments below thank you guys for watching i will see you next time